This video is about quite an obscure molecule, manganese pentacarbonyl. Even I have to admit that it's not the most important molecule, but it has real emotional meaning to me, particularly over the past few weeks, because I heard that Stephen Church, my first PhD student that I had here in Nottingham, who worked out the structure of manganese pentacarbonyl for the first time ever, I heard that he had died. And it's a really very sad loss to me and made me think again about manganese pentacarbonyl. So the molecule itself is got quite a simple shape. I've got a model here, which is one that Steve and I used when we were working on this in the very early 1980s. So you have a manganese atom in the middle and five CO groups. There's just one atom here in the model, but this is carbon monoxide. And the importance about this molecule is that it has an unpaired electron. It has an odd number of electrons, so it's very reactive. It normally only exists if it's in solution for a millionth of a second, something like that. And normally two of these join together. So instead of MnCO5, you have Mn2CO10. So you mentioned two of these joined together. And the compound Mn2CO10 is quite stable. You can see I've got a bottle here. So it's a yellow compound. And this compound has some importance in, as a catalyst in a number of reactions. So Steve's task in his PhD was to work out the structure of this molecule. I was his PhD supervisor. I was the person who was directing his work and helping him do it. And in those days, we were using quite an unusual technique to stabilize these molecules. So what we did was to make the molecule, manganese pentacarbonyl, in frozen argon, beginning with a more stable molecule and shining light on it. So that sounds quite complicated. Look at this picture and you'll understand it. This is a picture from the time that I supervised Steve. And you have to imagine that this cake is a piece of solid argon and the green cherries are stable molecules that we have isolated in the solid. We then shone ultraviolet light onto these molecules and bits fell off. You can imagine the currents as being the bits and generated new molecules like these red cherries. And because the cherries are stuck there in the solid and argon is unreactive, they can't go anywhere and they just sit there as long as you keep it cold. And you can record the spectra. And if you do clever things with the spectra, you can work out the structure. And that's what Steve did as part of his PhD. And we published a paper in prestigious journal of, journal of American Chemical Society. And here you can see Steve's name as the lead author. The thing that excited Steve was that I had done very similar experiments when I'd been a PhD student 10 years before Steve. And I'd written my conclusions. And he showed that I got them wrong. And so this is Steve's PhD thesis. Every student has to write a thesis. And here you can see the title of his thesis, Low Temperature Photochemistry of Manganese and Rhenium, he did both, Carbonyls by Stephen Peter Church. And it was finished in October 1982. And it's really typed by hand. No word processing, things like this. This part of the picture is from my PhD thesis, you can see it says Polyakov, 1972. And underneath, Steve has written here, bans, the, these things, misassigned. That's a posh way of saying got wrong by Polyakov. He'd proved me wrong, and he was really excited. So you can imagine what I felt. Well, I don't think you can, because I was really pleased too because that's the way science works. When I did it, I thought I'd got it right. But now Steve had got the right answer. I was really pleased. Science had advanced. I wasn't angry at all. In fact, one of the really exciting things about being a professor, about supervising PhD students, 
is that you work with really intelligent people like Steve and they think of things that I don't. So Steve worked out of his PhD structure of manganese pentacarbonyl. By the time he'd finished, a group in Germany under Professor Friedrich Gravels had got some better kit which was sensitive enough to detect manganese pentacarbonyl in solution in these few millionths of a second that it exists. And Steve went over there to Germany and worked for a year and got the spectra. So he got the spectra in solution. And then he went to America where another group under Eric White's had got even more sensitive equipment that could make the molecule in the gas phase. And he recorded the spectra there. So to this day, Steve's work on manganese pentacarbonate is really the definitive work on this molecule, even though it was finished 30 years ago. Steve was only 10 years younger than me, so almost like a younger brother. So we had really quite an intense intellectual relationship and unfortunately, after he finished in America, somehow we lost touch. And I really hardly heard from him again until I heard from his family about his sad death. And it's really sad for me that we lost touch. But there's one thing that I really owe to Steve, which nobody else has given me. When I was supervising Steve, quite often he didn't understand something and would ask me to explain it. So I tried really hard to explain it to him. And at the end, he said he still didn't understand because I'd explained it so badly. So I'd have to do it again. I wasn't pleased when he told me I was explaining things badly, but he made me do it again and again till he understood it. And that was really valuable to me. Nobody else has ever done that for me, made me do things again and again till I can explain them and teach them properly. And I think that all of you benefit from what Steve has done because he's enabled me to explain things to you on YouTube in a way that I never would have been able to do before. And I think we should all take a moment to think about Stephen Church who was an excellent scientist and who sadly died so young.